All righty, we're going to get started. Thank you so much for coming today uh, to the Ada Sigma Gamma call out meeting. The purpose of this meeting is to inform you about what Ada Sigma Gamma is and how to become a member. There is a process and initiation, so we're just going to explain that today. Um, uh, but first, I want to introduce myself. My name is Valerie, and I am the president of the Ada Sigma Gamma Alpha Theta chapter. That's our chapter here. Hi guys, my name is Amir Jahar, and I'm the vice president of Eta Sigma Gamma. Um, yeah, I'm very excited to all have you all here. Yeah. Um, hi, my name is Laura, and I'm the historian and initiates guide. And we have our treasurer is not here today, but her name is Noor. Uh, some MPH students might know her. And then um, Ahmad is not here. He's our secretary. He's actually an MPH online student, and so that's really cool. But he's on Zoom with us. That's so cool. <laughs> and yeah, and then we have Dr. Emma too. She's our amazing advisor. And uh, if you have any questions, don't worry about waiting until the end. Just like raise your hand and I can answer any questions for you uh, then. All right, let's get started. Mm, wrong one. There we go. Okay, cool. So what is Ada Sigma Gamma? Ada Sigma Gamma is a national and professional health science honorary uh, organization. So um, over 90 universities have a chapter on their campus that's active. And this is an organization that was a group of people that bonded together and our main purpose is achievement and academic success. Um, like I said, there are chapters at 90 universities in the US and it says, unfortunately, our chapter has been inactive for a few years, and it was, last year was when we kind of like try to ramp it back up. Um, and that's still kind of, we're in the process of that. We are nationally recognized by Ada Sigma Gamma. The only little thing is that we're not recognized by associated students here on campus, but we are in the process of that, and we have been for the last year, but it's not as easy as you think. <laughs> and um, the whole reason why is because we are a honor society and it's Greek, so we have to go through the Independent Greek Council and that just takes a little longer, but I did get um, an email yesterday with good news that it's in the process. So um, hopefully we will soon be recognized by the university. All that means is that we'll actually be able to get funding from associated students. But the important thing is that we're nationally recognized by the, um, by the headquarters. So. Moving on, what our mission is. And so our mission of the honorary promotion of the discipline by elevating the standards, ideals, competence, and ethics of professionally prepared men, women, in health education. So this um, honorary organization is open to all health science majors, undergrad, and graduate students. So we basically invite anyone who's under health and human development um, and has to do with health education. Uh, some of the goals that our um, chapter has is supporting the planning, implementation, and evaluation of health education programs and resources, uh, stimulating and disseminating scientific research, motivating and providing health education services, recognizing academic achievement, supporting health education advocacy initiatives, uh, promoting professional standards and ethics, as well as promoting networking activities among health educators and related professionals. So as I go through this presentation, you kind of see that a lot of the things that I'm gonna talk about hits all of these goals. So how do you become a member is the question. The way that it works is that you have to earn uh, a total of seven points. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. You also have to attend a certain amount of mass meetings that we have here on campus and you have to have a minimum GPA. So the points is we have a we have research service teaching and fundraising points. There's different ways that you can earn these said points and uh, research has to do with exactly what it sounds like is doing some research on any kind of health topics. So these are some of the ways that you can do that. We have a bulletin board where you can search a health topic and every month we want to have a different um, health topic that is posted on our bulletin board, which is on the second floor of Jacaranda. Um, but 
if you look up something there and we can post it on a bulletin board, then that could be one point earned. Uh, participating in an event or a committee that has to do with research, uh, maybe getting a research article submitted for publication, attending the ESG annual convention, which I will talk about in, in later slides, or for example, presenting at an ESG annual uh, convention or just presenting your uh, projects anywhere here on campus. So a lot of these points can be earned. This is not just limited to that. You, it's kind of like um, there's different special occasions that we can appoint you these said points by doing different things. So that's research. We have service points as well. So a lot of times that's just like by being able to attend a health fair and help us table. Um, it could be helping out with an event, planning an event, um, anything that has to do with servicing um, the, co the community or the committee or the whole club itself. Um, teaching, so two points of that to be initiated. So again, it could be part of the bulletin board, um, participating in the convention, participating in tabling. Uh, so as you see, a lot of these can overlap. Um, so if you have two points of teaching and you go and table, then it could be um, part of service. So it kind of moves around. It's very flexible. And then fundraising is just that, you know, maybe you go and do research on how we can have a fundraising at Chipotle or something, and that could earn you a fundraising point. The purpose of this is for you to go out there and actually do community service, and that's how you're going to earn these points. Um, so that's a total of seven. You have an academic year to earn that. Initiation is uh, in... Um, May, so you do have that long. You, yeah. So it's not a full year, but yes. So we're gonna, so we're gonna start now in the well, we'll exactly. Say October, we'll say October. Uh huh. And we have till May. We'll say first week in May. Like, yeah. More like the end of April. Yeah, end of April. So yeah. about five, five, six months to do yes. seven mm -hmm. minimum. Or yes. More for, uh, mm -hmm. Exactly. And it does seem like, how am I going to do that or whatever, but we do have opportunities and I'll talk a little bit more about what we did last year and how those um, members last year earned their points. Um, so, and like I said, a lot of it overlaps and you might already be doing something that can earn you a point anyways. So it is kind of like that. Come talk to us after if you have a little bit like of confusion with this, but it's just um, participating and you'll be able to earn those certain things. And we have different committees too that will allow you to earn these points within the uh, Honor Society. So did you have a question? Yeah, for like um, the bulletin boards or presentations, do you have guidelines for what needs to be included? Like how do you tell or is it just along one? Well, the bulletin board. Um, we, um, we just got the bulletin board. Literally, I had a lobby for that last year. Yeah. <laughs> um, most of you probably yes, if you know Susan Cohen. Um, it's right by her office. That's where our bulletin board is. So the first part of the bulletin board it just gives an overview of information about what ESG is, followed by the pictures of um, the executive board. Below that would be where you would be getting those service points. Virtually every month, you want to turn around. Like, you know, information that people can do. Like, I mean, this is a health education honorary. So, I mean, the month of, you know, um, you know uh, December, for example, you could have something about World Health or uh, World Health, uh, what is it, AIDS, World AIDS Day happens that, that, that month. So perhaps you can stick with that theme and have information that people can just, you know, see as they walk through the hallways. So that's yeah. really the purpose of the bulletin board to get um, other people, um, um, involved perhaps as a, as a marketing tool. Also the bulletin board can be used as a way to inform people about what we are. Also provide information about what events we have coming up. And lastly, as a way to just share health education or health-based information. And then um, just a quick question. So a thing like when you participate in an event, like for say, I'll say fundraising, do you have to go to that fundraiser? Say you guys have a fundraiser and got created and stuff. Do you get a point for going, or do you have to create that fundraiser and go at the same time? 
I would, huh? Sure. Okay, so like with the fundraising point, for example, let's say if you wanted the committee to help plan that fundraising, odds are you would get that point. Let's say if it was a tabling event, let's say if we were going to do a cookie sale, right? If you took, we usually split things into shifts. If you did a shift or so, then that would earn you a service point. If you um, created the flyers for it, if you did anything related to that fundraising element, you would get that, uh, that fundraising point. But let's say you helped plan the committee, you were in the committee to help plan it, um, you printed out the flyers, you worked the whole thing. I mean, literally, that could probably earn you all of these things. Okay. Because, I mean, in regards to teaching, if you're there and you're telling people what ESG is, that's part of that teaching, if that makes sense. Yeah. Are you creating that flyer? That's part of you doing research in terms of what elements need to go into that element. So there's so many different ways that you can earn these points. They're actually really, really easy. I think it's easy in terms of being able to accrue this many points. I think a lot of people find that towards the end that the points don't even matter anymore because they've over exceeded that. Mm -hmm. And the, the purpose isn't like, oh, after you get those points, I'm done. The, 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 the goal is you're going to keep participating. I mean, keep in mind when people become members, they're still required to get points, but I think it just goes down to one, one, one. If that makes sense. So like it would be one teaching, one research, one service, that kind of thing. So, I mean, the point is to keep being active in the community and within the philosophies of Apes and Yep. Yeah, no problem. So, yes, they're relatively easy to um, earn. So that's why I said don't freak out. Like, it's really easy and it's, um, it's definitely possible in the five, eight months that we do have. So uh, another requirement is that you must attend 75% of the meetings. So we have one usually once a month. So you just have to make sure you do uh, attend. We make it super easy because we actually record it on Zoom. We have it live on Zoom. So let's say if you can't attend, you can join on Zoom. If you can't do it because you're at work and you can't even join us on Zoom, then we record it, we upload it to YouTube, and then you just have to watch the video and send us like a little summary of what happened during the meeting that way we know you actually like saw the whole video so we make it super easy you have three options right there <laughs> so um 75 should not be um hard to do and then uh, at the end you do have to have an overall gpa of a 2.7 in order to be uh, qualified for this any questions about this yes no? So at the end, I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to, what I plan on doing is sending out a doodle link based on um, all the emails that we get today. So if you haven't inputted your email, don't leave before you give us your email. Um, because I do want to see what the majority uh, availability is. And that's how we're going to determine because we all know classes change and all that stuff. So at the end, um, I'll show you what I mean by that. But yeah, I'll be sending out a doodle link about that. Okay. Alrighty, moving on. So I want Dr. Emma Tu to share her experience. She's an expert in Ada Sigma Gamma, and she'll explain why. <laughs> So hello, for those that don't know me, I am Dr. Emma Tu. Um, I am a faculty member in the health sciences department in public health, so I teach a lot of the junior and senior level classes and graduate level classes as well. So I, I think I see a lot of familiar faces, so most of you have been acclimated with me. So ESG has done wonderful things for me. Um, I started ESG as a grad student. I was a PhD student and working on my master's at the same time. So I started it as a graduate student as well. Um, I got really interested in it because, you know, you hear, like you see in psychology, I forgot the name of the, um, their help honorary society, but psychology has one, right? And biology has one. And this is the first time I, I, I found out that health education has an honorary society. So I thought it was really, really interesting. And especially since I didn't want to do a postdoc. So I was trying to do everything in my power to get as much as I could on my CV so I can go straight into a faculty position. I did well. But anyway, uh, so that's part of the reason what really attracted me to ESG and also its philosophy, right? This element of service, teaching, research. Uh, um, I, I thought that it really, it, it really spoke really close to what it is that I wanted to do. So um, I, I initiated and became a student member. Then I was the president of the chapter, kind of like the role Valerie has now, the president of ESG. 
And then after that, um, when I interviewed for my, um, when I did my interview for CSUN, one of the things that I wanted to know if, is if they had an ESG chapter. They said, oh, we used to. I was like, great, I'll start one. And I think that's part of the reason why, too, I was so attractive for them to hire as well. Um, but other than that, too, uh, I also um, won Gamin of the Year, which is the highest honor a student can win. I didn't even know that that came with money. I got $750 at the national meeting, gave me a big certificate, gave me flowers, gave me the check. I'm like, what? And as a, as a student, you know, as a, a graduate student, I'm like, whoa, that's so huge. Also, at ESG, I developed the Sexual Health Awareness Boost. It was virtually a tabling event where we shared sexual health information. We even had like a wheel where you can spin and win a, a gift. It could be condoms. It could be all of these different fun things. Because those of you that do know me, it's all about sexual health for me, even though I try to uh, uh, push other topics. I try. I don't think I'm successful all the time, but I try so that particular activity also won activity of the year that year. So the whole department, Indiana University's department, School of Public Health, they won an award and they received some funding from ESG too. So it's not only your contribution as a student too, it's also the contribution of your department. And like Valerie said, it's a national society. They're all over. Um, so let's say you finish your undergrad here, you became a student member here. Let's say you go to grad school somewhere else. If they have ESG, you don't have to initiate all over again. You automatically go into their chapter, if that makes sense. Um, if you're a graduating senior or if you're a grad student that's finishing up, you're still part of the National Society as well. Um, you can still apply for some of their funding, their fellowships, um, their travel grants that they have through the National Society too. Also, I'll come back to this. Also, oops, oh, I'll share that. <laughs> also, they have a student monograph as well, which is a publication, a journal, where students can publish their own papers. Let's say if you have, you know, you took 441 or 445, or you're in 531, you know, I know I'm just throwing out numbers here, but you're in a big core class. Perhaps you wrote a really, really good paper. Maybe that's something that you can do. You can publish that paper. It looks good if you're going into a graduate program or if you're looking for a job. So ESG does provide that opportunity for its members to publish a paper. This is one that I published when I was a doctoral student. I wrote it by myself virtually. So um, I did, um, I surveyed um, uh, some undergraduate students about their perception and sensation seeking related to sexual risk behaviors. And that was something that I was able to put. It's peer reviewed, so it looked good. Okay, but in regards to some of the things that we've done, at, um, at Indiana University, not here at CSUN, but at Indiana University, where we did a brownie math and science where um, we had young Girl Scouts and we virtually had them go from section to section where they kind of learned more information about science and math. We did fun activities with them. So this was a, a way for them to really, really learn about math and science and then also some nutritional elements as well. We also did a roof lily overnighter where this was again with some Girl Scout girls where we kind of did an overnight um, kind of uh, activity with them and we taught them how to, you know, self-work, how to, you know, uh, have healthy relationships, just some life skills that they could utilize. We also did a CPR certification where people would come for CPR and um, they would pay 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 us money and what we did was you know some of that funding uh we would keep and the rest would go to the appropriate organization that helped us do that we are currently doing that here um nor our treasurer she's not here today was so nice to get us involved with that so that's going to be a fundraising element as well perhaps that could be if some of you reached out to nor that could be a way you can get a fundraising point and then here I already talked about my sexual health awareness booths that I did. So um, ESG definitely provided opportunities for me. As Valerie was so, you know, she was spot on, you know, talking about how this just got revamped. I think the ESG chapter here has been inactive for over 10 years. So this is virtually new. So in, in regards with some of these programs that I was involved in Indiana University, we want to start creating programs that we can initiate every year. 
Um, so that's why, you know, this particular, I hope it was attractive. We were trying to really reach out to grad students, first year grad students, because when they become members next year, they can do a little bit more. Um, or juniors or, you know, seniors, not that anyone can't join, but it's one of those things. We want to really get a couple programs up and going. So it could be something that is a tradition or a continuous process for ESG. All right. Any personal questions for me? And I'm probably going to be the faculty advisor indefinitely. I mean, <laughs> as long as I'm here, it's probably going to be so that kind of thing. So take it away. So, okay. So the initiation ceremony. So there is an initiation. So like we said, you have to earn those seven points. You have to have the minimum GPA. And you also have to have the 75% uh, attendance on all the meetings. Um, so it does take a full academic year. So that's why I said like, Usually we have the initiation um, in, during May. Um, and it will take place in May. So there are some dues and it's, they're actually, you have to pay them at the initiation. Uh, chapter dues, that goes to us. So that goes specifically to our account that we have. And this is gonna pay for any materials that we ever need, a tablecloth, a sign. Those, all those dues go to that. Uh, they're only $20. We try to keep it low. And then there's the national dues. Those are $50. Um, if that one's one time? Um, national dues are every year. So every year. Okay. Chapter dues. Um, and after you pay that $50, we, we no longer collect them from you. The National um, Society will contact you for them. Um, but it's yeah. important to note, like if you look over there, you see your graduation form. Mm -hmm. There are honor boards giving out for graduation. And so $20 dues that you're paying for pays for things like that. Yeah. Um, if we do an event or if someone needs some funding for traveling, we can go into our account and actually assist with those types of things. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's pretty much what the purpose of the dues are. Yeah. And right now, that's the only thing we have, just because, like I said earlier, we don't have AS funding us yet, but hopefully, we'll be able to do more with our dues when we have some help from AS as well. So, and those are due the day of initiation. Um, so Dr. Emma Tu hit on this. Some of the benefits of being a member is that you do get access to the ESG um, website. Some of the things that they provide is the student journal where you can uh, publish some of your articles. Um, another thing is that you'll be able to attend the annual meeting if you want. The cool thing about that is that um, if you are a member, then you can apply for travel grants. And even Dr. Amatu said that she'll help you out with that um, in order to help you out in getting to, each, to the uh, conference. This year is in Ohio, um, and it's, in, it's on April 4th through the 6th. And there they have a lot of activities with the different ESG chapters. They have like a t-shirt swap. So I would take my t-shirt and then I would give it to somebody from Indiana University. And then we could just switch like that. Um, it's like a little fun thing. And uh, students have their posters there. They present their research if you're interested in that as well. And you can actually get funding from AES for that too. So you might be able to go for free completely. Um, and it's just a great place to uh, meet other students who are in your position as well as faculty and staff, a lot of those. Um, Members go there and you can make uh, great networking relationships there. I just want to say a few things mm -hmm. about this. And SOFI stands for the Society of Public Health Education. It's a big national um, uh, conference for health education. It is really synonymous with um, uh, um, APHA, American Public Health Association. So it's another huge conference. And the national meeting for ESG happens there. So that's where you see, like, I mean, the dean of my old department, Amy, he always goes because he's still a life member of ESG. So they do the meetings there. And then also, if you're applying for conferences, you can literally, ESG has its own, like, sector at this conference. So you can um, do an oral presentation. You could do a poster presentation. You apply for it the same way you would with, with any other conference. And if you're presenting for this uh, ESG specific um, conference that they have at this particular event, then odds are that they would be more likely to fund you. Yeah. Another thing is that you can get a cool ESG t-shirt. Um, so price varies. 
depending on how many people. So, um, you know, if you order in bulk, then it's cheaper. But this is our official design that we made last year. Um, and we thought it was nice and simple. And uh, we do have the link for that. So if you are ever interested in buying one in order to, you know, you are going to be a representative of ESG. So we would like everyone to have one for tabling uh, purposes and for any other activities that we do so we can represent CSUN and the ESG chapter here. And then, so some of the things that we did last year, like I said, last year, we were really trying to revamp everything. And I think we did pretty good. We did a lot of tabling, which was great because we got our name out there. We got our face out there. We got a lot of information out there. So as you can see, a lot of our members uh, got research points for doing this. They got a lot of health education um, information for one of the community fairs that we got invited to go table at. And... Um, so we, we did that, we did tabling for uh, CSUN's University uh, Counseling Center um, Joint Advocates on Disordered Eating, the National Eating Disorder Week event. So they invited us and we were able to go and give information about eating disorders and nutrition and everything. Uh, and it was just here on campus for a couple hours. And then we did tabling for the city of San Fernando as well. And then we also, had our monthly board meetings and we had our first initiation in a while and that was really amazing thanks to Dr. Emma too but those are some of the things we didn't really get around too much to fundraising we really tried um, and that's you know still in the process but that's why we're trying to recruit members now to really um, help us out to make this even bigger so we've started it and we want to keep it going and make it bigger and better and we want to collaborate with different clubs and organizations. So if you are in a club or organization, um, then we want to be able to collaborate with you um, and be able to go table or provide information or whatever it is. So this is all about collaboration with each other. And so like I said, revamping, we want to engage in activities around campus. So like I said, collaborating uh, not only with on campus, but with the community. Um, it could be uh, student clubs and centers, and the, for example, AIDS Walk is a really great way to do that as well. Um, create our own activities. So if you have any ideas that you've been wanting to implement here, then we're totally open to those ideas. Uh, we want to be able to raise some funds. So if you have, you know, we've thought about everything. We're like, oh, donuts. And then like, okay, we can't do donuts. We're health education, and we're giving out donuts. We can't do that. So if you have any ideas of like really fun ways that we can fundraise money, then we're open to that too. Develop our presence here on campus and we're really trying on that. Um, and at least we have our shirts now, which is great. And then we also have our tablecloth, uh, which has helped a lot too. And then um, we're also looking for students who are gonna be here next year who want to get some leadership experience. And this is a really great way to do that. And so in March, usually we have our applications for our um, executive board for the following academic year. So we are looking for students who would like to step up to the plate and um, that, that would be a really great way. And it could be right now you can be involved in committees or you can come up to any of us and let us know about your interest and we could really give you a lot of tasks to prepare you for some kind of position um, in the executive board. So next steps. So what are the next steps? So make sure that um, you inputted your email in Amir's iPad. So he'll pass it around <laughs> in a little bit. But make sure you don't leave without giving us your email. Uh, because with that email, we're going to be able to um, schedule our, our monthly meetings. So what I'm planning on doing is sending out a doodle and seeing, uh, everyone knows what a doodle link is, right? Yeah, okay, cool. And see everyone's availability, see where we can have most students attend. It's just gonna be a monthly meeting. Usually they're an hour, an hour and a half. We try to keep it straight to the point and concise. We all know we're busy. Uh, but again, we do have Zoom available. We send out that link you know, just a couple of days before with the agenda so you can join us. And if not, then we will record those meetings and we'll post them up and then you could just send us that little summary to our email. Um, and yeah, so make sure you don't leave without our email. Is there any questions at all? 
We also have, I don't know why the link, uh, no, I don't have it here. Okay, well, I added another slide about, we have social media. So that's actually one of the committees that we usually have is social media. Um, we have a Facebook, so you can always look us, look us up there. It's ESG Alpha Zeta. We have a Twitter and we have also an Instagram. So um, if you're interested in social media management, then let us know. That would be a really great way. But we also post all of our information on there. So if you ever miss any meetings or anything, then um, you can also check on our social media. Any questions at all? Fun stuff? Do you have any last? Yeah, I do. So, um, you know, I'm, if you've had class with me before or, you know, you actually came and talked to me, I probably had to do the, the same speech or you've heard the same speech somewhere. But it's really, really important to know that when you guys do graduate, even if it's an undergraduate degree or a graduate degree, there's going to be so many of you. It, it's, it, I mean, there's a lot to pick from. What's really going to distinguish you is going to be all the little things that you can do. Um, or all the things that you have done apart from getting that degree. So I think that that's also something that's important to carry with you. The reason why I've been able to be so successful from undergrad graduates because I'm, I was always looking for opportunities as a student. To the point that, I mean, I, you know, it was able, I was able to pave my own way based on seeking these opportunities. So I just wanted to just like point that out. Yeah, and it's true. And I have done the same thing. I was able to get my internship because I was involved on campus and everyone's jealous because my internship is here on campus and I don't have to be driving everywhere. So it's awesome. So it pays off little things like that recommendation letters for grad school. If you're thinking if you're undergrad and you're thinking about going to grad school, a lot of my recommendations were based on clubs like this and the advisors, you know, their faculty, their staff, they have a lot of leverage. And so it's definitely beneficial for so many reasons and being able to have these types of experiences really makes you marketable and um, a very, it stands you out as a candidate in the job market today that we all know is very saturated. So, yeah. And Valerie herself is a rock star. She's the president of ESG. She's a um, president of MPHSA and the president of SHAC as well. Vice president. Vice president of SHAC, yes. <laughs> yes. And, and yeah. more, but I'm not going to brag. So. Yeah. <laughs> I can brag about yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, just kind of, she's a second year MPHSA. Yeah. So you can kind of see, like, you know, how she's kind of setting herself up as well. And I mean, Amir, too, he doesn't only do this. He's working on with me with some projects. We're getting ready to publish a paper together. So, I mean, it's, it's about getting involved. Yeah. And then, so is there any other questions at all? Okay. Well, I also, they're in the back uh, table, but I printed out little, like, um, cheat sheets so it kind of tells you our mission the points um meetings and gpa and our contact information which is our email that's the best way to contact us if you have any other questions that might pop up later all right thank you so much for coming we really appreciate it and like i said don't leave without giving amir your email that's the way that we're going to be able to create the see everyone's availability and have a set schedule for our monthly meetings. And one last thing, you guys, mm -hmm. um, with all of our social media, our name is the same. Mm -hmm. So you can follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Instagram. It's just e, um, ESG DAC, um, underscore, underscore. ESG underscore Alpha Zeta. Mm -hmm. It's the same for all of our social media, so you can follow us as well. It's a good way of just being acclimated with what we're doing. Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. you.